This one is called The Basement of Desire. Sooner or later, you realize that all the leftover wood you've been saving, all the scraps of PVC pipe in the utility closet, all the plumbing nuggets you've squirreled away, all the used sandpaper, loose roofing nails, railroad spikes, iron filings, copper battery caps, coils of solder, cylinders of tin, carafts of glue, single hinges, tubs of bulbs, nylon cord, bladeless hacksaws, rusted caulk guns, bent nails, blunt screws, broken hammers, brittle gaskets, sleeves of galvanized washers, leftover shims, insulation kits, cans of mineral spirits, screen door hardware, drawers of squeeze nozzles, noxious solvents, the whole haberdashery of plastic pieces sheathing connectors and containers is just a metaphor of shifting meaning representing sequentially and recursively your childhood, your body, your marriage, and your mind. <laughs>
when we would be sitting on the curb in front of the sick communion cafe, where you were telling me the body is a tabernacle of bliss and blister. And the smile on my face was palpably inapt. And I blurted out, there's an ill energy that emanates from your precise heart that I find attractive, to which you replied, editing me with a surgeon's cruel disinterest. You mean I have an attractive ill energy? And I said, yes, that's what I mean, though that wasn't at all what I meant. <laughs> And the sun was pursuing the moon in an ineffable dance of unlikelihood and redress. And you were wearing your father's shoes, though I remember thinking what large feet you had, learning later that that was unfair and untrue, learning later that your heart, like all hearts, was fuzzy, not precise, that your candor was a sham, that you were neither a mother nor unmarried, that my interest in you was usury, not interest at all, that I was a man not in full, but in foolishness, a false Montaigne whose chin beard, though elegant, was the merest bravado. I am Twilight's pissoir, the orphan's inclination. My star is dead, my constellation crushed. The Prince of Aquitaine has fallen and cannot rise. I am the shadow of Waxwing slain. In the tomb, in the Outre Tombe, I see the sea of Capri, the hearse of Mercy, la lune de Pantum, la place du Caprice. Désolé, désolé, where the vinegar and the wine are one. Cherie, I am naked and red. Give me back my color and my clothes. Give me back my singularity, my tristesse, my photo ID. She sits in the gondola and burnishes her arms. She puts the piquant radish in her mouth. She grabs a loofah and wipes the rainbow from her neck. Thank you. Very happy to appear in uh, Rhino, and uh, the Cranshaw poem that I'm going to read uh, is part of a series of poems about this uh, character. Cranshaw on a boat. We were floating on the chain of lakes, eating Rice Krispies out of a bucket. The sun is a soft lozenge, medicating a bright red sky. Water skiers hold on to their slackening ropes like love itself. On Party Island, the icy drunks have seized control. Cranshaw has his hand inside Margaret. No one is shocked. He was born brazen. But when he starts in on the Jews, Arnie gets mad and pushes him over the side. We let him tread water, then swing around to pick him up. Justice? No. Margaret wants him back. <laughs> Chapel access. Every tunnel's a piercing. Every road's a tattoo. The billboards are wrinkles. Road signs are scars. Cranshaw said he saw eternity last night, wearing a sarong and smoking a cigar. You're full of it, Cranshaw, I said, and stared at the fraudulent broken line that stuttered in front of me. Madeline in the back seat touched me on the neck. Why so ornery, she asked. Why? 2008, 2009, 2010. That's why, I snarled. What was eating me? Continental drift, urban sprawl, Cranshaw, his smarmy teeth and mildew jitterbug, his check suspenders and dragonfly belt, 2011. Maybe everything. <laughs> 